In this lecture, we're going to be setting up setting up a LUN um, to be able to attach it to uh, ESX, ESXi host. Um, that's our that's our goal. So first things first, we have our open filer. We've logged into it. We've set it up ready. And now we click on, so we have status, system, volumes, cluster, qu uh, quota, shares, service, and accounts. So you can click on services. And then we're going to click on the, so iSCSI target. And we're going to click enable, modify, boot, right? And then we're going to start it. You may be asking yourself, what, is, what does iSCSI stand for? And what, why are we doing this, right? Well, as you can read, it stands for the Internet Small Computer System Interface. And the purpose we're doing it is so we can actually set up a LUN. So a LUN is different than a, than a SIF share um, in that a LUN is like a, a logical, it's kind of a logical unit number. And our purpose is to set it up to where we can have multiple ESXi hosts write to that LUN versus just a share, uh, a share drive. Think of a LUN as a, a shared hard disk or a shared data store, a shared repository that you can um, you can save your VMs to. That's what a LUN is. So after that, next thing we do is click on System tab and then scroll down a little bit. We're going to define the network access. In our case, we've already done it. Well, let's just delete it and do it again. Too easy. So we're going to name it. Same thing. LUN network share or network host, excuse me, is 172.16.30.0. That's our, our network. And our, our subnet mask is a 24. So that's 255.225.250. And our type is a share. So I'm going to update that. So now we see that we have our network access configuration. The name is LUN. Okay, now the next thing to do is to click on the volume. So we're going to kind of probably go on left to right, or what, left to right, you know. So we're now we're clicking the volumes, and we're going to create a new physical volume. So when we set this up, we set up I believe the 250 gig or something like that. So we're going to create a f new physical volume. So we have um, you have two disks, right? So the the one that this is the OS. This is a dev A, a dev SDA. That's the actual hard drive. The open filer OS sits on. The other one is dev SDB. That's actually what we want to do. So that one has nothing on it. There's um, no partitions, anything like that. We're going to click on the edit disk, the second one there. Okay. So we have the partitions, right? We have all this space. So um, I'm going to create a primary partition. So I'm going to leave it a primary. I'm going to do the physical volume, change it, the partition type to physical volume. The starting cylinder is going to say one and the ending cylinder is going to stay the same. And we're going to click on create. As you can see, we, we've created a um, a partition. It's a little shorter or smaller because of course um, you know it didn't take all of it but uh, that's normal actually 190 gig out of 200 a gig that's that's normal we're left with some extra um, partitions that that's normal. Okay now that's done uh, we could click on uh, manage volumes on the right here so we're going to call this uh, the group name. We'll call it, um, uh, let's see, let's call it VM LUN. How about that? VM LUN. That's good. Click uh, what you want to select to add, VM LUN, and then click Add Volume Group. Excellent. So you have, um, you have a new volume group that you've created. That's great. So now, um, after we've created the volume group, we're going to click on Add Volume. Okay. Okay. So select volume group, right? We're actually going to create an uh, volume, right? So add a volume. So 
value name. Let's call this value name. So, um, value name. Hmm. We'll give it a name called fancy name. We'll leave the volume description blank. We we'll use all of our space there, required space. So we've called our fancy name, uh, fancy name, right? Okay. Volume description, required space. We changed our file system to block and click create. Scroll a little bit and you'll see we have a volume group name and the volume name is fancy name. Okay, so the next thing to do is to create an iSCSI target. The right hand side here, you click on iSCSI targets. You can change these actual values if you wanted to, right? You could change it to that 108. You could change this to, let's say, fancy name, right? Raise open filer if you want. And then you can change this to, say, like, uh, LUN. Doesn't matter, really. You can do anything you want. So I, IQN dot, you know, whatever you want, dash 01, right? Or not. You can do that, too. And um, fancy name, okay. Okay, click add. So you've just created a um, iSCSI target. You can scroll down a little bit here and you can change some of the things if you desire. Some of the, uh, I'm going to leave it blank, leave it default. Uh, you know, it is, um, comes default, so I'm going to leave it default on those settings. Okay, next thing is do, so you got target configuration done. Next thing click on is LUN mapping. Okay. You don't have any LUN, ma uh, LUN maps as target. So on the right here, um, under map LUN, we're going to click on, uh, yeah, that's fine, block IO, sure, map. And you're going to see something pop up here. Yeah, great, fantastic. You're going to see LUN ID, logical unit number is what that is. LUN path, read write mode, write through, serial number, uh, SCSI ID, transfer mode, after that, we click on the network ACL, uh, which stands for Access Control List, and then change it from deny to allow. Remember that one we said earlier? We created a, uh, a LUN name, right, network host. We're going to click it to allow, or access allow. Click update. Okay, so that's done. Next thing you do is we can click on update. Top right hand side here, if you have internet on your um, on your open filer right okay so the next thing we'll do is we will reboot it so we're gonna click on shutdown and we're gonna reboot the filer okay looks like the open filer is back online we click on services yep I guess he's good. Okay, so let's log in to one of the ESXi hosts. Okay, fantastic. So we're on the ESXi host. So let's also log into our vCenter. Okay, 30, right? Yep, 30. That's our vCenter server. It's that 30. Okay, so logged into our uh, vCenter. And this is 6.7, by the way. It looks a little different than 6.5. Give you a little real estate here. So, of course, there are vCenter servers expired, license, inventory, right? Of course, we know that. Okay, so we are going to add the iSCSI LUN to each, each ESXi host, right? So these are our three hosts on the left here. You got 31, 32, 33. So we click on 31, let's say, right? Under... Okay, we're at storage adapter, not storage device, storage adapter. Uh, you click on, so under configuration, we're going to go to storage, storage adapter. We're going to click on the add software adapter, or yeah, add, add software adapter, right? So you're going to click on add software iSCSI adapter, click OK. Okay, that's completed. When you do that, you're going to have something that looks like this. The iSCSI adapter right there. This one, I, uh, mod, 
iSCSI software adapter. That one right there. So we're going to click, uh, select the iSCSI software adapter. Click on properties. If you have a, a smaller screen, let me actually close this out. Maybe I can give you more real estate so you can see it. Yeah. So properties, then actually click on um, dynamic discovery, right? And then click add. So you're going to add the IP address of your iSCSI, what was it, I 250 I think it was? Yeah, dot 250. Okay, inherent authentication for parent. Click OK. Port number is 3260. Leave that default. Okay, rescan of. Okay, so we do here. So we're going to rescan it, I guess. So we'll click on this storage. So this one with the little yellow sign here. We'll click on. Uh, so it says rescan of VHBA. 65. Okay, we'll rescan storage. Okay, we'll rescan for new storage, rescan for new VMFS volumes. Okay. Now, if you click on uh, devices, oh, actually paths, right? You see this here, you see the iSCSI target um, set to fancy name, right? And all that. So it's active. That's good. So that's in 31. So let's do the same thing for 32, 30, uh, 32, and 33. And I'm going to do actions. So I'm at the data store doing actions. I'm going to do storage. I'm going to go new data store. So I'm gonna, actually, this is going to be uh, VFMS, so disk LUN. And I'm going to select, this is going to be just open filer right in general right, open filer next VMS um, 6 we use all the partition block size is important by the way so we can't uh, so we're gonna leave it at 1 meg and click uh, next and finish they're shared between the three so there's no need to actually add them because they're already added so that's awesome so now you see the, the data stores you see the open filer we have our own data store that share between three ES6I hosts now we're ready to stand up a VM create a VM do whatever um, yeah so thanks for viewing this tutorial if you like this video and you want to see more please jump on to my course which is, I have two courses. One is at getajobnit.teachable.com and the other course is on Udemy. It's Learn Backup and Restore with Commvault, Get a High Paying Job. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just type in Gary McNeely or Commvault Whisperer. There's some good content there related to this. If you would, could you click on the subscribe button and click on notifications? Thank you very much.